This is the Grid for Life Living Wild and Running Free Workshop. We're into the second week of a four-week workshop, learning how to release ourselves, our spirit, our soul, our vision, our passion, our purpose from the things that have held us captive for way too long. When we, when I think of the wild, I think of a place that is untamed, uncharted, undiscovered, whether it be by anybody or just myself. A place that I have to be prepared, that is full of checks and balances. A place that is kill or be killed, because if you don't go in prepared, there are dangers and hazards and obstacles that could take you so far off course that you may not return. A place where you have to determine that every time you get knocked down, you're going to rise. Rise always. Because if not, then you're going to fall permanently. Where I live here in Colorado, we have numerous mountains and people love to rock climb and, and they love to hike. And the thing about it is it can be dangerous at times because if you don't go in prepared, you can become dehydrated. You can veer off course and fall and get hurt and maybe not found. And so that can be related to our life where if we don't know what we're doing, we very easily could trip ourselves up. In doing this, we find that we've become depressed. We've, we find ourselves anxious. We find ourselves not living with a purpose and in that we feel no value. Men, I know a lot of times this, this video is going to have a lot of stuff that is geared toward men, but absolutely the ladies who are watching this can glean something from it. But men, I know that so many times the way that we've been brought up, our past, or the way the society tries to shape and form or tell us how we're supposed to be leaves us wanting, leaves us feeling like we're a ship with no compass, feeling as if we are walking through a dense jungle and we just keep hacking and hacking and hacking, just hoping that we're going to stumble upon a path or somewhere that allows us to escape out into freedom. We're just surviving. And there is a difference between surviving and thriving. You see, surviving is just getting by, outlasting, with hope. But thriving is flourishing forward with confidence. See, there's a difference there. If I'm just surviving, that means I don't have really any direction. I, ha I don't have the right tools and I'm trying to survive with what I have. And so many of us, that's how unfortunately we live our life. We get up in the morning feel, feeling unfulfilled and feeling almost like a robot is just, I'm just surviving. I, I hope there's that hope part that I that I can make it through the day. I hope I can make it through this week. I hope I can hold my family together. I hope that I can be the father I need or the husband I, I need to be or the man in society that I need to be. I just hope. And the reason that we are surviving and we're just hoping is because we're walking around aimlessly. We don't have a set of principles that can help guide us to allow us to change that surviving to a thriving aspect. And when I said talked about I said thriving is a is flourishing forward. It's having a vision and not just hoping that I can accomplish that vision, but knowing with purpose what that vision is, the principles or ethos that will guide me toward that vision, flourishing forward forward. And because I have that foundation, those principles that are guiding me, I do so with confidence. This does not mean that there's not going to be setbacks. This doesn't mean we're not going to trip up and fall. But as I stated earlier, when I fall, I know because of my ethos, because of my principles, because of how I focused forward, I'm going to rise always instead of falling permanently. We have to establish ground rules. And in essence, the law of the land, the law of the wild. 
in the wild, we know that there is a hierarchy of things. Certain vines will overgrow big, gigantic trees and block out the sun and the nutrients. There are certain animals that will eat the smaller animals that ate another animal. There is that essence of the law of the land. You know that you don't build on, si on shifting sand. You want to build on a good foundation. Yet, so many men today, and women, but so many men have not been taught properly how to build that foundation. We talked in a previous video about how so many men have learned to be a man from other boys. We grew up being taught how to be manly from other boys as we were a boy ourselves, instead of learning from the maturity of others. And so what that has done is we are now find ourselves in the midst of our adult life, in an essence, trying to trek through a forest that we don't know the law of the land. We haven't prepared for it. And we don't even know where to start preparing for it. We don't know how to establish those clear and concise guidelines. You know, when I was in the military learning to do land navigation, we had clear, concise things that we did. We looked at a map. We looked at landmarks on the land. We compared those things. We used a compass. We used a protractor. We did clear and concise established guidances to help us not get lost and find ourselves going from point A to point B. We knew where we wanted to go. We had the tools to use them. But in our life, we haven't really established those ground rules. We haven't established those landmarks. We look out onto the horizon of our life and there's so much chaos and we have no idea what we need to be focusing on. We know what we hope to focus on, but some of the times it's cloudy, sometimes it's dark, and we, we can't see the horizon, and we can't see what we're looking for, and so we get lost, we get scared, but we don't want to admit that we're scared, we don't want to admit that we're lost, and so we just wander aimlessly. Instead of establishing a, a landmark to say, that's where I'm headed, I may veer off course left, I may veer off course right, but that landmark on the horizon is present. And I know that when I go, when I veer off, I can look up based upon the principles, based upon the tools that I've learned to use, I can reestablish, reestablish my azimuth, which is compass terms and land navigation terms of where I'm headed. And then I can reestablish the path that I need to take through the wild. And to be able to accomplish what I needed to accomplish. How do we do this? We do this by learning to live an ethos grounded life. Setting those landmarks in our lives. Setting those points. Setting those principles. Using the tools. And then at the same time, maintaining focus. I'm not saying that all the time. It's just as I explained just a minute ago. We may veer right. We may veer left. We may lose focus due to... Due to obstacles that come along our path but we never lose sight of the end goal and we never stop using those tools or principles or ethos that we have set in our way in order to accomplish what we need to accomplish it will guide us through the wild so let's take a look at this what is an ethos i've mentioned this several times i mentioned it in previous videos if there's any video, guys, that I really want you to pay attention to, and ladies, because ladies, you can have ethos, and I believe it is important that everybody sets an ethos set or ethos standard in their life. I'm going to read this to you, and this is the definition that was given, and I'm going to give you a couple different things before we really start talking about how to build that ethos. So, the dictionary definition of ethos is this. Characteristics, spirit, a characteristic spirit of a culture, era, or community as manifested in its beliefs and aspirations. What does that mean? It means different characteristics that have been so grounded and established in a community or an era 
that that you can look and say this is what guides them this is what is their identity this is the characteristic of that era that community that individual it is contrasted to a pa- pathos an ethos is contrasted to a pathos which is appealing to emotion we don't want to build our foundation of our life and principles on emotion emotions change attempting to guide ourselves through the wild of our life our spirit our soul on emotion attempting to be the man that we want to be whether it be a husband whether it be a man in the community whether it be a father or a brother doing that based upon emotion and not a principles of ethos is like trying to walk through quicksand and thinking you're going to make it and you just keep walking and the further you walk the more you sink there's no solid ground because emotions fluctuate and you don't ever want to build it it's like trying to build your life on a fault line doesn't make much sense aristotle defined an ethos as this referring to a man's character or personality balance between passion and caution i'm going to say that again aristotle is stead, aristotle stated that an ethos is referring to a man's character or personality balance between passion and caution there's that balance we can become extremely passionate about something and we can almost become passionate to the point of becoming crazy over it. And when any time anything gets off balance and off kilter, you threaten your life, your passion, your vision with failure. Because what happens is you become so zeroed in and focused and you are no longer principle driven, but passion driven. Passion is an emotion. And after a while, that passion could fizzle out. What happens when you base it upon passion and it fizzles out? Then you no longer have the drive. You no longer have the vision. You no longer have the goals. But if it's principle-based, if it's character-based, if it is founded upon an ethos that you said, here is my ethos, this is what I build my life on, that is a firm foundation that you can return to. It's that landmark, once again, on the horizon that you can constantly look at and say, there it is. This is my goal. This is my path. This is how I'm going to be the best man that I can be. This is how I'm going to live wild and run free. I'm not going to be allow the authority and the authenticity of my life to be stolen by this passion. And at the same time, the balance on the other side, where you go off kilter the other side, is caution. I know too many men who have lived a life where they have failed. And they thought that their failure defined them your failure doesn't define you your failure is a lesson a lesson learned on how not to do something but what they did is they then became captured and shackled by that fear to the point where everything they try to do becomes cautious it may be that you've loved before and your love has been rejected or you did something that that love vanished from you You were rejected as a person. You lost someone that meant so much to you in some form or fashion. Or maybe you lost a job. Maybe you you tripped up. You took a chance and you uh, you had a huge financial loss. And what that did is that that failure, that loss, captured you and it sunk its talons into you and dragged you back to its cave and set a prison around you that every time you think you need to once again live wild and run free you try to step out you're like oh but remember because your mind begins to play tricks with you your mind says yep remember but remember the last time you tried to love you were rejected last time you try to be yourself people laughed last time you try to authentically be you and pursue your dreams no one understood it and then when you slipped and fell oh everyone pointed at you and you retreated you better stay just stay here play it cautious play it cautious play it safe stay here in this little cell 
because you'll be okay here. And what it does is it takes a hold and it literally quenches the conquering spirit of a man. Ladies, maybe you know that you have a man in your life who just seems defeated. A man in your life who, I've, I've talked to women before, said, you know, my boyfriend or my husband, he's just not, when I first met him, man, he was so full of life and he, he was so passionate and he was just so driven and he was just, just this adventurous, crazy guy. And now he doesn't do much. I can't get him to open up. When we first got together, he, he would, he would open up. We had great communication. Now he doesn't really communicate much. Uh, he had a lot of dreams and visions, but now not so much. He just kind of just does his thing and we're just kind of disconnected. I would venture to say it's because somewhere along the way, something happened. And instead of embracing an ethos driven life, he allowed that fear of either the mistake or the fear of rejection. It could be that maybe one time when he was opening up to you and communicating that you reacted in a way, his response is his responsibility, so is yours, but your reaction wasn't what he expected. And so he's playing it cautious now. He's, he's scared. I know there's men out there who took a business risk and they went to their spouse, they went to their family and they said, hey, we're going to do this. This is going to be amazing. We're going to go great. We're going to go gung-ho. And it did not happen the way he thought. And his, and the financial burden that it became on the family just deflated him. And he retreated and became captured to his own mind. And now he's just playing cautious. You can go either way, either really, really passionate and just constantly spout off and go at entrepreneurs have entrepreneurs tend to do the passion part. They don't find if they're not careful, they don't find the balance. They jump at this chance or they jump at that chance or they jump at this chance and never quite finish anything. And they really have no, they think they have a principle and they're, but it's just like, oh my God, that's beautiful. That's a cute little shiny new toy. Well, a boy does that. A boy sees something brand new. Ah, I want that. And then you have the cautious. How can we find the balance in that? How can we build a character foundation in our lives with an ethos? We have to establish one. So how do we do that? In my personal life, I was that, I've shared a lot before, but I, I was that just kind of go off the cuff type of guy. I would have told you that I was wild. And in essence, I was, but I wasn't free. Because I cared about what other people, I've been rejected so many times. I've been hurt so many times. I've been bullied. I've been made fun of growing up. And then into my adult life, I learned to live, I explained before in another video, learned to live behind a mask. And so I was wild, but I wasn't running free. And I was playing it more cautious at times, but then other times really passionate. And I was just going with the waves, just back and forth, back and forth. And almost in my, in an essence, you could say that my life was becoming seasick. Instead of finding that level playing field, that foundation that I can drive forward. I had to understand, you hear this before, I think a lot of times when it comes to change or in like a sales type of business, you ask, they, they always say, what's your why? Why are you doing this? And in an ethos, building an ethos for your life in an essence, it's almost like a mission statement. But an ethos is not just a mission statement. It is a set of guiding principles. And you have to know why. When it comes to my life, I came to a point in my life where I had, I realized again, been rejected, have been hurt. I've been through several divorces. I looked at my life, didn't like what I saw. And I finally had to come to a point. I had been in the military and I had learned about warrior ethos. In fact, let me share with you a couple of warrior ethos. The Air Force talks about its ethos as an embodiment of the warrior spirit, tough-mindedness, tireless, 
motivation, unceasing vigilance, commitment, and self-sacrifice. The army, mission first, never accept defeat, never quit, and never leave a fallen comrade. Those sound powerful. Those sound pretty tough. And in my life, having served in the army and served in the air force, I knew these and these had been instilled in me, but I had compartmentalized my life. In the warrior side of who I was, not a father, not a husband, but in the warrior side, I knew that it was always mission first. I knew I wouldn't quit. I would not accept accept defeat and 100% would never leave a comrade behind. I also understood the importance of self-sacrifice and to be mentally tough. But I wasn't doing this in my personal life. Again, that off balance because we are multifaceted, gentlemen. We're not we're not just the career guy, not just a husband or a significant other, we're not just the son or the father multifaceted in different times in our lives these take different shapes sometimes the career if you're single and never been married and don't have kids the career is that number one thing and that you're you are that person in your career and in society but then you start you become a boyfriend and now that significant other and later maybe in marriage begins to move up a little bit and that career kind of comes back here and then you have kids and it's constantly this constant turmoil because of my having been where I have been in my life, I realized that I was off kilter. I was off balance. And in in, in essence, I I could see the landmark, but I was veering off to the right or to the left. And when we do that, the longer we go, the further away we get from our goals. So I remember sitting down, I started taking, I started reading. As I stated over and over, I read a lot. And if you don't read a lot, you are doing yourself a disservice. Even if it's just audiobooks, it's like, I can't keep my attention, I can't read, then listen to audiobooks. Some of the books that I have read over and over, American Generalship, character is everything, the art of command. Now remember what Aristotle said. He said that an ethos is referring to a man's character or personality balance between passion and caution. This book stood out to me. I picked it up one day and character is everything. The art of command. I have read this book over and over. I have loaned it out and always made sure I got it back. I have I have highlighted it. I have underlined it. I have written notes on it. I have gone back and reviewed it. Learning from some of the great men of history on character and what character is. What I had to do is say, okay, I know what I want, but I don't know how to build it. So the first thing you need to do is say, okay, yes, Nate, I want that foundation. And yes, I want to have something that guides me instead of just going all over the ocean and and running through the jungle willy-nilly. I want to be focused. You need to first start finding tools and information that will help you, such as this video, such as reading books, finding individuals who you can look at and say, I like what I see in them. Let me pick out and look and analyze the good things that I can put into my life. When you're starting to build an ethos and you're going to have, I'm going to have you write one out and it might take a while. I'm going to explain mine. When you start writing an ethos or like that life purpose or that those life statements, such as, like I said, with the military, with the army, mission first, never accept defeat, never quit. Never leave a fallen comrade behind. These are bold statements that can have stuff underneath it, but it's those title things that said, this is the principle that I am always going to come back to. It's the anchor that holds me steady in the time of storm. Where do I get that? You start pulling around. Okay, I like a little bit of that. I like a little bit of this. This speaks to me. What is your why? The Heart and Fist. Second time reading this book right now. The Education of... The Education of a Humanitarian and the Making of a Navy SEAL. Fearless. The Undaunted Courage and Ultimate Sacrifice of a Navy SEAL Team 6 Operator, Adam Brown. 
These are three books that I have read over and over and over. Highly suggest them. But what I had to do is this. And this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you need to start taking notes if you haven't already. I had to come to a point and say, what's my why? My why is, why is my family. You can take everything else from me. You can take my life. You can take my money. You can take my status in society. But my family's my why. And each person's why is different because if you're not married and have, don't have kids right now, then maybe your family's not your why. You're your why. Maybe your dream is your why. Your goal is your why. But it needs to be something that is can be lifelong. My family. And so I started taking a look. When I started building it. I said, well, okay, how do I achieve ensuring that my family understands that they are number one in my life? What do I know when I build my ethos? So I go went back to the military because I knew that. Or it's, again, it's something I can glean from, something I can pull from. No reason to reinvent the wheel. The wheel works. Use it. You might want to put some different tires on it to match your need. And that's what we're going to do. And so I started taking a look. Mission first. Well, family first. Never accept defeat. My family is first. And in pursuing the best life, both physically and emotionally, for my family, I will do what I can. And I will not accept defeat in the pursuant of this. Never quit. In the pursuit of ensuring that my family, emotionally and physically, are set on a firm foundation, I will not accept defeat. And when defeat threatens, I will never quit. I will exhaust everything I have, including giving my own life. Never leave a fallen comrade behind. Understanding that at any time, any of my family begins to fall back in any aspect of their life because they have chosen to be married to me and because life has chosen to give them to me as my children, I will step back. I will offer that shoulder. I will offer that hand. I will lift them up. I will offer the shield wall if necessary for them to heal. And in doing so, I have accomplished my ethos. So in an essence, that's my ethos. How do we use that ethos? How do we apply that ethos? We're going to be covering that in another video. So what I want you to do is understand this from this video. If you do not have principle-driven life, if you have no written set standard that you can return to, which again, in another video, we're going to be talking about how to apply this ethos. Then all you're doing is running through a jungle, hacking away with no set focus, no real purpose, and you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to become exhausted and you're going to fall permanently instead of rising always. If you have any desire to build yourself up as a man who lives wild and runs free, as a man worth coming up alongside, being a teammate to, leading someone who you hope to lead, whether it be your family or whether it be in society, or just be a man who knows he has value and purpose, then it's time now to start picking and looking and choosing to understand, as Aristotle said, referring to a man's character or personality balance between passion and caution, it's time to start setting that even ground. And how we do that is we use the tools that we can do to even out the ground and set a firm foundation to set for the horizon that landmark. And we do that by understanding the ethos and the principles that will guide us, that we can always return to, and we can shine a light on and say, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is where I'm at. How does it fit in to my ethos? So what I want you to do today for your soul portion of this video, for those who are actually doing the workshop, I want you to write down, start writing down. And again, this is not going to be something you may be able to do right away. If you need help with it, 
reach out. You can personally message me if, if you are doing it through our Facebook group, or you can email me at gridforlife2015 at gmail.com and just put in the subject ethos. Then you want, what I want you to do is start looking at individuals that you respect. What is it the guiding principle? What isn't in their life that you respect? What is your why? How does the elements that you're pulling from their life affect your why? It, even take what I've already written. Look up the Army ethos or the Air Force ethos or military ethos, warrior ethos. Use that as an outline. Again, not reinventing the wheel. And start writing out your ethos, your guiding principles. I'm going to state it one more time. Kind of mixing the two, the Army and the Air Force, because that's what two I served. Mission first. So for me, my family first. Never accepting defeat. I will never accept defeat when it comes to my family. I will fight and fight and fight and fight on every step of the way for my family, for their future, for their well-being, both mentally and physically. Never quit. And understanding that if I quit, I accept defeat. And so by not accepting defeat, I will never quit. I will fight even if it means self-sacrificing my own life to ensure that my family is where they need to be. Never leave a fallen comrade. If at any time my family begins to fall back, any member of my family, I will not charge forward. I will not charge over them. I will step back and provide a shield wall. I will offer them a, a solid ground to step on. I will carry them if I must, but we together will cross the finish line. What is your ethos? As I stated in the next video, we will be talking about how we use an ethos once we have established it. And it also will probably help you as you create your own. Remember, live wild, run free. Why? Your response is your responsibility. Now go grit it.